I have 10 pro tips that can save you lots of headaches. Watch to the end and see all 10 and the final results. This is the corner of your TV, a 90 degrees. So without using all X, without buying any more connectors or wasting money on other stuff, you can do a 90 with this strip here. So you want to be careful with that resistor because uh, it's sensitive, it can snap off the, the solder. So right before it, you want to bend it towards the opposite way first. So you make a 90, kink it right there, and then boom. There's your 90, the opposite way you want to go. Now you want to go that way, so you kind of hold it there. And then bend it right there. The resistor didn't get messed with a whole lot and there's your 90 with no connectors this is pro tip number one all right guys welcome to ask Clem today the best how to's and today the moment we've been waiting for is that we're going to do a a halo around a TV, an LED halo. Well, what is that? That's when we have a decorative color light behind a TV in order to give that ambiance where they can change colors and it looks pretty cool and it can also act as a night light too, by the way. So, first of all, I want to show you right here, this is the bracket that I install. Now, I want to go ahead and run my wire on this side of the TV up high I don't want it in the middle because if I was to push it back, my wire will get pinched and we don't want that. So one thing I want to make sure is that we keep in mind that that wire is going to be on this side. Then I'm going to do some tie wraps and then have it down this channel, which goes to the power supply. And as you can see here, that's my tick mark. So I know that my wire is going to come down this way. This is the top of the TV. That's the bottom. So if you notice also that I put blue tape, and one of the reasons for that is because I put, uh, I'm gonna put contact cement so for the LEDs not to fall because the LEDs might stick today, but give it a month or two, depending on the heat, what's gonna happen is, is that LED is gonna fall and we don't want that to happen. We wanna make sure that thing sticks. If this is the first time to my channel, you may wanna consider subscribing and slam on that bell so you can get the latest videos that I put out. Now, I'm gonna show you. These are the LEDs that we're going to be installing. So it's a four connector, RGB, and then you got the plus, it is 12 volts. And most LEDs come with a connector already by manufacturer, already connected. And this is for those that want to do it real quick. Maybe you don't know how to solder. Uh, and then you get these connectors and put them on. The only thing, because I've been doing this for quite a long time, these connectors are not that great for secure. They don't secure, they don't get tightened that good and all of a sudden vibration will have it disconnected. And I don't care for that because I've done so many LEDs. What I do is I actually take this little plastic heat shrink off and take the solder off and I connect my, uh, my 22-4 wire right and solder it right to the LEDs. That's guarantee it's not gonna come apart. Uh, so like that, it's a better secure. So now, so those are my LEDs, and now this is my controller that I'm going to use. Call it a credit card controller. This is a slightly smaller than a uh, credit card controller than your typical one. It is an RF, and because it is an RF, that's a radial frequency. That means I can go anywhere next room and all that and be able to turn it on and off. If it's an IR, it'll be a uh, infrared where you have to be direct sight in order to turn it on and off, just like a remote for a TV. But I love RF much better than the other ones. Now, just to show you, there's different types of controllers. This is my favorite. This is my go-to. But I'll put the link in my description uh, so you can buy it on Amazon. Um, so again, RF controller with the credit card size. So, uh, but this one does all sorts of modes and uh, crazy things that you can do and all that but this is my go-to guys I always have several 
with me just in case. And this one, you can connect it here. So here's my power supply. I can connect, that's one option to connect power to it. Or the other option is to have a regular power supply and then connect it to here, your plus and minus, and that, how you can give it power. And then your wire's going out. So what we want to do is, uh, let me go ahead and hook up, I'm gonna hook up my soldering gun. I'm gonna put this little thing here. Here's my soldering gun. Again, this is the solder that I'll go ahead and put it on my link below. So if you're wanting to buy a solder, not all solders uh, gun are equal, because you want one that can heat up fast, because if it doesn't heat up fast, then what could happen is your LEDs can get ruined and then your little copper will get messed up. And then here's my solder wire, which is not, it's real thin, it's not real thick. And I love this one, I think it's a .22. So, and the tip on the soldering gun is replaceable. Uh, you can see it's kind of blunt, mostly it's into a tip. That's okay, that's because of the heat. So every so often, I'll grind it into a point. So there's the soldering gun. I'm gonna let it get heat up. Before I put the contact cement, I wanna make sure that I'm ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect this there. So while that's heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and get my 22 gauge, eight, uh, 22 four wire uh, braided. I want it braided in order so I can have it ready to solder to that. So let me put my glasses on and let's see here. I'm just going to trim this off to the side, make sure that they're even, evenly cut. So now I'm going to go ahead and strip, and I just want to strip maybe just an eighth of an inch, not a whole lot. I'm only doing a tiny, tiny bit. That's all you need, because if you have it any, any longer and you solder it to the uh, LEDs, there's a potential of touching and that shortens out, and you don't want that to happen. Now, talking about touching, um, once we solder this, we're gonna test it out to make sure that my solders are good. So that means that you can test any LEDs with a power supply in order to make sure that they're working properly. Perhaps you had an issue where you put the, connected the wrong thing and, and all of a sudden your power, your power supply or your controller got messed up, but you wanna make sure your LEDs are working properly. Well, that's one way to check it. Not only that, uh, the Chinese, Japanese, whoever makes them has a tendency of not putting the label to the right color wire. So you always want to check it beforehand to make sure you got the right color wire to the right location. Just because it says RGB, it doesn't mean that, like I've seen it where the G is actually blue and the B is actually green. So it's always good to double check it. It says 12 volts. So that means my black wire is my power this time. Now the Japanese, Chinese, they, they kind of turns things up. They change these colors. Like you see this one here. This has got yellow, blue, red, and green. This one's got green, blue, red, and black. So they change it up. Sometimes there'll be a white. So you always gotta be alert to where is your positive. This is my positive. So my positive, I'm gonna go ahead and hook them up together. I'm gonna to hook these up together. Okay, so because this is 12 volts, no voltage, I'm okay holding this here. So now, what I'm gonna do is test it. Now, the, this next one says B, but my wire is green. I think it's gonna be a green light simply because they do mess this thing. That's why it's important to test. So here's how we test it. Boom, there it is. It's going by the wire, color of the wire, not by what the word is on the LED. So the next one is an R, that's red. And the next one is green, but we have a blue wire here. So we'll test this out. So we see it's blue. So that's how we test the lights to see if they're working. All right. So now, let's see if my soldering iron is hot. And the way I do it, I just kind of put a little bit of the solder 
No, I still need a little time. So in the meanwhile, there's a two-way tape in the back. I wanna go ahead and take the two-way tape off of that white uh, heat shrink because I'm gonna be cutting it up. So, I'm gonna take my knife here. I just wanna cut that jacket off so it can slide out. And if you have, and if that, if that uh, double-sided tape is connected in the back, it's gonna be pretty hard to pull out. Okay, I'm not saving this. Don't need it. All right, so now, because I'm gonna solder, I always like to use a back thing because I don't want anything where I'm soldering to get messed up. So this is kind of an aluminum paper, and this will be perfect. So I like to peel it a tiny bit so it has something to hold. And I'm gonna tape it there. I'm gonna lean this so I don't have too much pressure going on there. So basically what I'm doing is I expose the solder there. So let me see here, let me see if I'm hot. I am, all right, so it's ready. So hopefully you guys can see this. And you do it left-handed or right-handed. Let's see here if I can do this. Cool. I got it. So it's removed. But now I want to put just a little bead right on there. A little bead. So when I put the next wire, we've got plenty. And also guys, don't forget that when I first started on this, I was like, man, I wanna make sure that it doesn't get the solder on, 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 on the connectors on all of them because it's such a tiny spot. But trust me, once you start heating up the solder, it just bubbles right to that solder. Now if you put too much, then yeah, you're gonna have that issue. But hopefully you won't this time. Now, what I wanna do is, that wire that I strip, I have these little connectors here. I don't know if you can see it, the little tiny. So now I want to go ahead and just put a tiny bit of solder on there. So I'm going to put a tiny solder here, tiny solder there, a little bit there, and a little bit there. Instead of using some flux, uh, that's all we do here, just a tiny bit, and that's all that's necessary. In fact, the green one needs a tiny bit more. All right. Now, what I want to do, actually it be, it's backwards. Let me put this knife away, I won't need it. I actually want to flip this around. There you go. Flipping it around, so because I'm right-handed. So now, the white goes to plus. The red to red, green to green, whatever color is left over goes to blue. This happens to be black. So, so here's my plus, and, it, and because you have the right solder, it'll go pretty quickly. Just set it right there, heat it up, and then hold it until you see it change colors. Now, I don't wanna put stress on my wire, so I wanna bring this wire to the right orientation. Okay, now my next color is green. I'm gonna take green, I'm gonna set it right there. Notice I'm not putting any more solder because what I did as a dot is enough. Boom, the next one is red. And the next one left over is blue. Hang a second, I can't seem to tell this wire where to go. Let me put them under. All right. So see, he just laid right there. Like he knew exactly where he's going. Oh. Slide it on okay. So it's done. Now we're going to go ahead and test it. Okay, since it's done, personally, we won't need no more solder. So I'm gonna disconnect this, let it cool off. Now I'm gonna connect, let me see here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and connect this to make it my test. Now, because it's got a button here, the inside is plus, the outside is your color, RGB. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this guy on the inside. And now watch this. That's my blue, and you can see, there's no other color bleeding and all that. And when I say color bleeding, imagine if red and blue were connected together, this is the color I would get. That tells me that my solder is not correct. But because it gave me blue, now I wanna see if it gives me green. Now I wanna see if it gives me red. If I see those three colors, red, green, blue, RGB, that tells me that my solder is good and that my lights are gonna work properly. If you don't have red, green, blue, there is something wrong with your LEDs. Let's say here, if you have green and red together, this is the color that you're gonna get. This is the color that you're gonna get. Let me put this contact in here. It's not totally green. Here is green. But when you have this, then something is wrong. So, so understand, now let me see here. You will never get green and blue. That's a teal. Short-wise on the LEDs because the red is in between. So once, once you get to understand your colors, then you know, oh, okay, I know what's exactly what's going on. That's how you troubleshoot. That's how easy it is to test the LEDs, okay? And I did it with this guy. Now, if I had the other type of controller, Let's say if I had a controller like this, then I would plug this in, and then I have, then I would plug in a positive and negative wire to this, give me a little short, you know, like pigtail, and then be able to touch these wires, and that's how I can test it with a power supply like that. Okay? All right. So, this guy, I'm gonna set it to the side. He's cooling off. I don't wanna touch it. All right, I'm gonna put the solder to the side. Now I'm going to go ahead and peel this gently. Now the reason I want to peel it gently is because these guys, these little tiny guys, those are resistors. Those resistors there, they're sensitive. And if you wiggle that LED too much, it can come undone. So anytime you install LEDs, your first two to three months is the most critical because the handling, installing and all that could mess it up. So if the LEDs are gonna go bad, it'll go month within those first few months. If it doesn't go bad within those first few months, then your LEDs are gonna last for quite a long time, five, even 10 years. So that's the nice thing about LEDs. They are human made, they will go bad, they don't last forever. So please understand that. Don't get that, some people have that as a misconception that they'll last forever, they won't. Okay. If you're getting value, let me know by hitting on the, uh, the like button, thumbs up. So like that, this will let me know that you like what you're hearing. Also, uh, the LEDs and all these products will be in the, in the description below. I am gonna show you a neat trick, and that is how to do 90 degree turns. A lot of people do loops. A lot of people buy this little extra device, you know, a little 90 degree and they, they slap it. Again, connectors. I'm gonna show you how to do a 90 degree without messing up the LED and it'll look more professional. No loops, nothing like that. So look forward to that. So guys, I went ahead and put some contact cement started already. This is a chip brush. This is a one inch chip brush. And it's just a matter, just real light. Put a little bit of contact cement on that area that we taped. And now my LED light is about 5, 5, 5 sixteenths width. And so what I did here, I put about a quarter inch gap, eyeballed it, just so the contact cement doesn't stick out, but that when I put the LED, it covers my whole area here. And if you know about contact cement, you gotta let it dry a little bit before you apply your 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 LEDs kind of a little bit pre-measured uh, this is how I did my 90 degrees guys 
So this is gonna fall in this corner here and there's no resistor. So what I was able to do is just kind of fold it and there's my 90 degree turn. Nice and beautiful, not a huge gap. I'm not wasting a lot of LEDs, but I am careful not to be going too much excessive on bending in that area. And see, it's a little tacky. It's tacky. And that's why you only put a little bit, because you just want it tacky. So now what we're gonna do, gotta take the tape off. It helps. Take the tape off. Oh, another thing too, guys, to remember. This here is sensitive. So my wire needs to go this way. So I'm gonna grab here and I'm gonna put what I call it a service loop. I'm gonna twist this guy and then boom, now my wire is going down. But I wanna make sure that my wire is not in totally in front of that light, okay? Boom, so now there's less stress right in this corner. All right, so let me go ahead and peel this. I'm gonna peel it past that corner. So now, because I know where that corner lies, I wanna go ahead and kind of put that corner in first. And just tap it every so often. Once you tap it, then with your thumb, your finger, just slide it down. And you see that this wire is coming this way. So I'm just gonna kind of have that wire Kind of hold it right there. Boom. Now we're going to do this side here. So one way that you can do this is by actually having it on to make sure that you didn't mess anything up. But we'll turn it on here in a bit. Just want to go ahead and then push this kind of this way. See, I'm pushing in carefully, and then that's it. Now, here, remember that we cut our LEDs right with that copper zad. That's a sign where to cut. So, I'm going to cut it right in the middle, and that's done. And look at that right there. So, I'm actually going to tuck underneath. So now we're gonna go ahead and test the LED lights to make sure that they're all working. All right. So we and make sure that I got green, a green light. Good. I got a red light. Good. And I got a blue light. Beautiful. So again, if green and blue was touching, that's the color we get, kind of teal. If red and blue, got a pinkish. So then we know we have a short there. All right, so now what we're gonna do is put the controller in. So we're gonna go ahead and do is strip these here. I do wanna cut these tips here because these tips are soldered and I don't need that. All right, so now I cut these tips. I wanna go ahead and give myself about maybe 5 16 or so. I went ahead and cut the tip because normally it's solder on the tip. So I got that rid of, so I want the wire. I want to go ahead and make these just a little bit longer. So on this particular one, it has the, my power, which remember I have the option to put wires in here for power or come in here with the device. So we're going to come in here because that's what we have. So I'm just going to just crank these guys down. Don't need them open. Again, this is, you don't, can't crank it all the way down, just, you know, like super tight because it is plastic. So now we're gonna go here. There's my V plus, that's white, red, green, and blue. All right, so we want these to be maybe like a quarter of an inch. So we're gonna go with white. Go ahead and put this here. So we're gonna go white. Make sure wires are not sticking out. Put it in here like that. Give it a twist until it's snug, and then pull it. Don't pull it too hard. Yeah, you don't want it coming out like that. 
The next one is red. We got red here. Snug. Green. And then the last one, B for blue. We're going to pull this guy a little bit. Okay, he's not coming out. And now snug this guy up. All right. We want to make sure this guy keeps popping out. We want to make sure this guy stays in. All right. So now what we're going to do is bring our power. We're going to put our power in here. Boom. So it's going to remember the last setting that was in. So there's your controller. Here's your, you can turn it on and off. And then you have, you got to test the red. Red, green, blue, what's that? Purple, cyan, yellow, orange. There's white. Then we got phase three. You can speed it up. And then we got phase seven. Seven colors. Phase three, you can slow it down. I like phase seven. And you got jump. You got flash, which I don't care for a whole lot, or jump seven. I love the fade. But being up behind a TV, either you blue or green, red, and then you can dim them. Dim it. There you go. Or we can make it nice and bright. So now I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the wall and let's see what it looks like. Alright guys, so here we got it up on the wall, now I'm going to turn the lights on. There she is, there's the halo. Alright guys, here it is, the halo, the remote control, we got the red color, the green, and the blue. So that means I can get all the other colors that I want, even the Fade 3. So hopefully you guys have enough understanding, enough knowledge to go ahead and do your own. And it'll look cool at night and could act as a nightlight. So question for you guys. What would be another LED project that you would like to see on the video that I can go ahead and create for you? Just go ahead and comment on below and let me know. But here's a heads up. I uh, may be recording some functional LED lights from underneath the kitchen cabinet. So I'll be able to record that and show you how to run the wires and how to make it work. Hopefully you guys will like that. Again, give us a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe and slap on that uh, bell so you guys can get the latest video. All right, guys.